Oh, Shalom, this is the part two on taxes, taxes and give unto Caesar, you know, the whole give unto Caesar and these uh, tax evasion charges, for example, Lauren Hill, she's in the eye of the storm right now, and we had did a previous vid when we saw this on the Huffington Post, if you see the, I think so, this would be the third vid, I think, in this series right here, or the third vid on this subject matter, and we had compared um, Lauren Hill right here, right? We compared Lauren Hill. Um, this this photo of hers, this picture that we saw of hers reminded reminded I and I about this particular um, a chart right here um, of mugshot. the mugshot. Yeah, mugshot. Uh, but this reminded I and I of this um, particular chart right here of the Ethiopian um, or the African saints right here. If we go a little bit larger right here, we can see some of that African saints um, of North Africa and parts of the Middle East. And we had thought before that this was actually a, a male, because, you know, it's in that John the Baptist kind of image that you see a lot of time. But actually, this is a, this is a, a, a sister, um, St. Mary of Egypt. This is Catherine right here. And as you go further across the second row right here, you see that there are five of them that are mentioned right here, or five of them that are shown right here. I don't know if this is is the Bora, it's the Bora. Can't read this too well right here. Um, and this is Perpetua, right? Perpetua. And this is also to encourage those sisters as well who are going through tribulation because as brethren we know we have a prison ministry and majority is the is the brethren which we have um sought to minister to sought to inquire about um and to to strengthen them you know saying and strengthen their uh rastafari rights you know whether it's to you know hear exemptions or to wear tams on those levels or even on the more uh, grounded faith-based levels of Shabbat and, and the food and, you know, what kind of food, even while incarcerated, because other groups, you know, religious groups, whether some of the Christians or the Muslims or even some of the Jews uh, um, incarcerated are allowed to, you know, there's that respect of so-called religion in the American law and something that the Romans also to a degree had. You understand until Christianity grew more and more, even among their people. You understand. So the role of the Gentiles in Rastafari is also very, very important when they recognize that they are to be the testimony where they're at. You understand? As we, the the native or the ethnic um, people, Beta Israel and Hebrews, have been that testimony where we're at. So it's not so much like well come to Africa or go to Africa and make us, you know, make us, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? But it's more or less to stand up for Rastafari truth where you're at, to bring that testimony to civilize the, the heathen of your own Gentile people, or at least to bring forth that testimony for all who, all who seek to receive. So anyway, we was on this particular subject matter right here, and we just wanted to make this connection right here, and... Let's bring up Lauren. So if we bring up Lauren right here, Lauren Hill, let's see if we can line this up so that we can see this better. All right? We bring up Lauren Hill right here. Right? Um, unfortunately, we have to keep... Uh, well, this is a tale of two cities. You know what I mean? You can see that. You know, a city is usually recognized in a feminine sense. So it's a tale of two cities. You know what I mean? Um, and we read her statement about what she basically was so-called underground, so to speak, you know, while she tried to organize. She's a community organizer. You know what I'm saying? A community organizer. But there's there's been a certain amount of hate to Sister Lauren, you know, from before for, for a lot of other um, reasons which are not good. You know what I mean? In the I-9 community. And some of us know it. Some of us don't. You understand, so forth and so on. But anyway, back to the point about um, Caesar and uh, the whole tax issue. This is what we're facing right now. When His Imperial Majesty Kadamawi Haile Selassie says that, 
you know, um, that there's not anything, you know, all things basically are written in the scriptures to the wise and to the faithful and to those who receive the spirit. In truth, all things are written in their principle, in their essential, you know what I'm saying, in their substance. All things are written in the scriptures, right? All things are written in the scriptures. Interesting how this uh, photo right here, Theodora up here, and Lauren, if you look at the faces, you know, according to this, Theodora and Lauren right here. So let's um just continue on that tax issue, right? So they came up to Christ and they asked Christ, right? They asked Christ. Let's see who who it was that had asked Christ this. Um, let us. Uh, I think it was, and they sent to him their disciples along with the Herodians, right? The Herodians, and they sent out to him their disciples with the Herodians saying, Master, Rebbe, Memher, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any or italicized man. The context is man. So this was added in right here. That's why in your Bibles, King James would be italicized. So it really wasn't there so much, but it's the context there, right? For thou regardest, it says, for thou regardest not the person of men. In other words, you're not a respecter of faces. You know, that's what it means, respecter of faces. You understand, but you look for graces. In other words, not a respecter of faces. Down here in the New Translation, says, you, you do not court anyone's favor because you show no partiality. According to the Ethiopic, this would be a little more correct here, at least bringing out the point. In 1611 time, that was understood as not showing any partiality. You, you, you are impartial, in other words. Now, they came to him and they said these lovely words. Right? All right, pick up on this. They came to him and said that thou art true, and you teach us the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any, you know what I mean? In other words, you don't court anyone's favor, for thou regardest not the person of man, um, because you show no partiality, right? That's what they said. Then the Acts, in verse 17, Matthew chapter 22, Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Like, what's your opinion? I, I, I'm just going to call. I just want to find out what's your opinion on it. Uh, I just want to find out what you think about this. In a sense, they came out like Judas goats, if you, if you always. Remember, the group was the Herodians. Now, it's very interesting to study the different type of groups there were in the first century in Yeshua HaMoshiach's time, in Geta Iesus Christos's time. Because we have these same sort of groups even today, like the zealots, the more revolutionary. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Groups, you know? Um, I think Barabbas, either he was down with some of them too, even though he was more like a, a thug or a criminal, but he got down with them. But remember, this is all before the conversion. This is all before that, 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 that path, you know, was saying to the Father's house was made um, open in Yeshua HaMoshi, that open door. But we know from our former studies that Petros was revealed by the Holy Spirit and not by flesh and blood, not by the Eucharist, the God with them. You understand? But here they ask this interesting question, um, Tenquilenia in a sense question. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Remember, the Herodians are the party of Herod. They're like a political party. It's like the Obamanites today. They'll be like the Obamanites. Right. So what's interesting is that when we look down here with the whole um, Lauren Hill, right, the whole Lauren Hill issue, it's very much one and the same. You understand? It's very much one and the same. So now to understand what they were under, let's see if we can help you understand what they were under. So now here, um, she's a Herodian for, for sure. See how this cuts so perfectly? You understand that um, Oprah, right, is an Obamanite, or she's of the tribe of Obama. I mean, you might be of the tribe of Obama, too. Uh, and I hope it works out for you. You understand if you are. Um, well, not that I hope it works out, but I, I, I pray you, you, you wake up. 
and you're over saying and see the bigger picture. Now, this is not getting into all politics because they try to get Yeshua HaMoshia into this whole political. So what, you don't like Obama? You know, some folks have tried to, you know, what, you don't like Obama? And I don't know, are they uh, Herodian, in other words? But this Herodian, right, this modern Herodian, Oprah, right, Obra, as I like to call her, Obra, right, Obra is asking, oh, you know, like Obra, Obra, she she wants to interview Lauren Hill on her own NWO back with channel NWO own. Look at that, look at it in the mirror, all right, right. She want to interview her, right, about whatever, you know, right, and maybe to get ratings because you know people probably will show up so forth and so on. But Lauren Hill, Sister Lauren Hill has uh, refused that. Right, and like I said originally, I, I saw this particular picture since we was doing a study on the um, African saints, the African Kedusan. We, we we got that connection. Plus, we saw the vid, the vid that I think we have, which vid, vid is in, but where she's performing recently. You understand? And she has some really, really on point, you know, on point relics and everything like that. And um, it's almost like she began reemerging. As soon as she began reemerging, boom, they hit off this tax stuff. As soon as people started talking about her, boom, um, along comes uh, uh, Caesar, right? Along comes Caesar, and here we go right here. Along comes Caesar. So let's put this into, you know, let's put this into its um, context right here, and you can see clearly um, Caesar Borgia, right, Cesare. Cesare Borgia, right? Words sound in power. They may spell it different, but when you, you know, the word sound sounds one and the same. You know, saying tomato, tomato, blah, 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 right? So let's go to the scripture right here and see if we can um, glean a little bit more from this, right? Um, and as we go forward down here, so they ask, is it lawful? So maybe that's what Obra wanted to ask. I and I, sister, is it lawful? You know, saying, why didn't you pay your taxes? You know, blah, 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 blah. I understand you're doing community um, organizing or activism, building a community of like-minded people. Oh, what do you mean by the military-industrial complex? I mean, you know, and it's interesting who said that. I, Eisenhower said that. Remember, Eisenhower was the former U.S. military general and president that had met with his Imperial Majesty, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, um, and he's the one who said, um, uh, Eisenhower is the one who said military industrial complex at the end of his uh, term in office, right? But before that, when he met with his Majesty, so that his Majesty, you understand, his Imperial Majesty, who didn't have a big old Western education, had told him things that he should have known already, but really who had taught him, who had schooled him. Interesting that he leaves the last lesson that he learned from his imperial majesty for last. And it's interesting that they would suppress that military-industrial complex um, issue for so many years until, like, after, like, 2001. Then it begins to come out again with all this stuff about Iraq and, and weapons of math, WMDs, and so forth and so on, Right. Now, Yeshua, he perceived their wickedness, and he asked, why tempt ye me, hypocrites? So let's go Bamarinya to the Met of Kedus of Negus and the guests right here, right? So let's go right here, and it says, Dek ames amoritach winnim ka hed ros wegengar la kuvet. Ersum, ersum, memheroi. Eunatenya and the honey. Taunatem ye egiziavi herin menged in the tasa tamur in oak allen. Le manenem atadela. Yes, own feet. Ata a melecatamina. Right? <laughs> now, go forward, go forward. Um, so they're from Hadros. Let's look at that that verse again, verse sixteen for a moment. Bamarinya dek right mezamora tachu in them and his disciples. Uh, okay, 
Okay, they're disciples. So Hazelos, like the Obama Knights, have their own disciples, in other words. Because these disciples are actually Herodians or from the Herodians. Remember, Herod was the king, you know, the king that the Romans had put there. And Herod was not a Judahite. He was not a native. You know, he was not an ethnic Hebrew. You understand? He was not. A, he was of Esau, Esau, Edom. And now you should understand that kind of connection as it traces down to the modern, to the modern times that we're in. All right. So it's similar to to the Obamaites, if you understand. We can call Obama maybe in a sense. He is. He is part. He is part. Edomite, if we look at that same black and white kind of thing going on. And it's not about just black and white, but we have to understand exactly what was going on. There is a racial element to it. That's why that has been the most effective um, sensolet or chain, right, utilizing that racial aspect, either making people think it doesn't matter what race, you know, or just focusing all on it. What we have to do is see what the divine balance you understand what the divine skills are saying about it. That means not judge people by their race, you understand, but also recognize when race is used. You understand? As it has been even with Obama, both for and against him, right? Um verse Kutar Asara Sabata in Gadi. Minya Meslahal. Therefore, tell us therefore what thinkest thou? Um Nigaren like a sad or a shar uh gubur gubur uh mesteta tefek adalin ways ala te tefek adem alut. So they you know what is it permitted or not permitted to give the gubr, right? The gubr, right? To uh see the the taxes. Now that word is interesting too, so just make a note of it, right? To give tribute, really, in a sense tribute. It's like a portion of what you have worked. You understand? To give a portion of what you have worked to Caesar. But here in verse of Asara Cement, Yesu Sema Kufatachuin Aoko, and Nanta Gibzoch, Nanta Gibzoch, Suleman, Tifeta Nunyalacho. In other words, why are you testing me? Then he says, Yeah, Gibruna Bur. Asayun ale and arsuma dinara metulet. In other words, show me the tribute money. Show me, show me the money. In other words, look at the dollar bill, y'all. You understand? Look at the dollar bill. Look at the coins. Look at the wood and the stone gods. Right? It says in Kut Haya arsum yehicha melk melka sehe fetitus yamanat. Alacho. It's interesting what he says here about Marini. He says, and this, right? You know, this uh, this uh, image, whose is it? Right? But what he's saying, this image, whose is she? Right? Whose is she? So if you over the language, he, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of a pun in there as well that can be received. You understand? It's like when you call a nigga a bee. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, "Who's is she?" Right? And and they said to him, right? Yek esar, yek esar. No. Remember, they said, "No." He asked not. He asked, "Who's is she?" They say, "He is or it is" in the male sense, but he asks, "Who whose description is this?" in the female sense, alus. The zian gizay in kias yek esarin lek esar yek gizavir nem lek gizavir asarakubu. Alacho. He said, um, they say to him, Caesar, right? Then saith he to them, render therefore to Caesar, right, the things which are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's, or to John, those things that are John's, right? But of course, they probably didn't really even understand that too well. You know, understand? Because they took Caesar. Remember what they said? We have no king those who crucified him, but Caesar, right? And then it says in Kutar Haya Hulet, it says, Yihinim Semto Te Deneku. It says, Tetotim, Tetotim Heidu. When they had heard these words, 
they marveled and left him and went their way. And then comes up the Sadducees, another kind of group. Like we have different kind of groups, different kind of mansions, different kind of denominations, even today. And when you look at the major ones, especially amongst us as lost sheep, once lost but now found, Beit Israel in, in the world, you find that they cut into the same sort of groups. And you find such clear, on the on the the ayeru, right? Yeah, you find such a clear, a clear context. It's almost as though we are living the very same, um, not reality, but, but the principles of that reality. So if we focus on the word and study it, we'll begin to recognize this in its real time. So this is why I point this particular uh, connection to the, let's bring this up, to Lauren Hill. You know, the whole connection right here to um, Lauren Hill, to the African saints, you know, was saying to even Oprah, Oprah as a Herodian. I didn't see it before when we first went into that's what will happen too, that when you uh, make your wills obedient to good influence and you just go about what, even the little bit that you know in truth. Not trying to please people, like even the Herodian said that he didn't show no favor, he was not partial or whatnot. The Holy Spirit will give you more. You know, and to those who have, more would be given to them. And from those who don't have, even the little bit that they don't have will be taken away from them. And that is the Master's, that is uh, Yeshua's, that's Yeshua's word right there. So, my brothers and sisters, let's pray for Lauren Hill. You understand? Know, pray that, that Jah delivers her in Yeshua's name. Um, and... Um, Learn from this right here. Please learn from it because they'll send those Judas goats to you too as well. So Shalom Ras Tefari.